They call him Africa's Che Guevara. His name was Captain Thomas Sankara. You may have not heard of him before, but you'll definitely remember him after you hear his story. A revolutionary symbol of pan-Africanism and anti-imperialism, Sankara was a soldier, military leader, prime minister and president of his country that he himself renamed Burkina Faso. He's probably the world's only leader to ever compose his country's national anthem. And in just four years of power, from 1983 to 1987, he led programs that vaccinated 2.5 million children, increased literacy by 60% and planted 10 million trees. He's the first African leader to appoint women to high governmental positions, outlawing female genital mutilation, forced marriage and polygamy. He banned luxury from his government, replacing Mercedes, chauffeurs and first class airplane tickets with cheap Renaults, small public salaries and a mandatory dress code of natively produced clothes. He opposed foreign aid and backed it by making his country self-sufficient, challenging the authority of former colonial powers such as France. But his unique legacy was cut short by a treacherous assassination in 1987, who many believe was carried out by his then close friend and now ousted dictator and longtime France ally, Blaise Compaoré. Mais je voudrais simplement dire que nous devons accepter de vivre africain, c'est la seule façon de vivre libre et de vivre digne. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. La patrie ou la mort nous vaincront. Born in 1949 in the small town of Yako, he was the third of ten children. Thomas' family wanted him to be a priest, but like many of his generation in Burkina Faso, then known as Upper Volta, he joined the military. In 1970, when he was just 20 years old, Sankara was sent to Madagascar for officer training. During his stay, he witnessed a popular uprising as students and farmers took to the streets and toppled their government and France's lingering colonial rule. This was a transformative experience for the young officer, who returned back home in a revolutionary spirit. In 1974, Sankara was hailed as a hero when his military prowess and strategy was displayed in a border dispute with neighboring Mali. Sankara's star rose. He was outspoken, he maligned the corrupt, and wanted his country to be less dependent on former colonial powers. This put him at odds with the ruling elite, leading to his arrest on several occasions during the 1970s. But Sankara's popular support meant that he could not be ignored, and after rising through the ranks for more than a decade, in 1983, he was appointed Prime Minister of Upper Volta by President Jean Baptiste Wadarogo, who came to power a year earlier in a coup. However, a few months later, Wadarogo fired him and placed him under house arrest. But soon, the people of Upper Volta started revolting. Mass protests ensued in the capital Ouagadougou, and the government ground to a halt, sparking the country's fourth coup in 17 years, led by Sankara's close friend and comrade, Blaise Compaoré. Sankara was free and now president of his country at only 33 years of age. Je me retrouve un peu comme euh, un cycliste qui grimpe une pente raide qui a à gauche à droite des précipices. Il est obligé de pédaler, de continuer de pédaler, sinon il tombe. Alors pour rester moi-même et pour me sentir moi-même, je suis obligé de continuer dans cette lancée-là. As a young leader, Sankara cast himself as a symbol of a proud and young Africa. Good looking with a beaming smile and a love of sports, he was a heartthrob president. And among other things, he was an accomplished guitarist, often spotted at night jamming with musicians. But he was also a conscientious, disciplined military man, frequently dressed in army attire with a mother of pearl pistol tucked into his belt, a gift from North Korean leader Kim Tu Sang. But it wasn't just an image or a myth, his accomplishments speak for themselves. From 1983 to 1987, he did the following. He rid his country of its colonial name Upper Volta and renamed it Burkina Faso, which means the land of upright men, in Maure and Diwala, the two major native languages of the country. He even composed the national anthem of his country, probably the only leader in the world who ever did that. On the ground, he vaccinated two and a half million children against meningitis, yellow fever and measles in a matter of weeks. He initiated a nationwide literacy campaign, increasing the literacy rate from 13% in 1983 to 73% in 1987. He also stopped foreign aid to his country. There are people who ask me, what do you want? But had a plan to back it up. He redistributed land from the feudal landlords and gave it directly to the peasants, and increased wheat production in three years from 1,700 kilograms per hectare to 3,800 kilograms per hectare, giving the country food self-sufficiency. He also managed to build a road and a railway to tie the nation together without foreign aid. We must put aside these aids by our own production. 
il faut réussir à produire plus. Produire plus. Produire plus parce que il est normal que celui qui vous donne à manger vous dicte également. Ahead of his time, Sankara recognized the effects of climate change and planted over 10 million trees to prevent desertification. He clamped down on government corruption hard, selling off the government fleet of Mercedes cars and making the cheapest car at the time, the Renault 5, the official service car of the ministers. He also reduced the salaries of all public servants, including his own, and forbade the use of government chauffeurs and first-class airline tickets. He even forced civil servants to pay one month's salary to public projects. Sankara was so committed to his principles that he refused to use the air conditioning in his own office on the grounds that such luxury was not available to anyone but a handful of Burkinabes. And he required public servants to wear a traditional tunic woven from Burkinabe cotton and sewn by Burkinabe craftsmen. Le Burkina Faso est venu vous exposer ici la cotonnade produite au Burkina Faso, tissée au Burkina Faso, cousue au Burkina Faso pour habiller les Burkinabes. Ma délégation et moi-même nous sommes habillés par nos tisserands, nos paysans. Il n'y a pas un seul fil qui vient de l'Europe ou de l'Amérique. One of his most profound successes was achieved through his unwavering commitment to gender equality. He outlawed female genital mutilation, forced marriages and polygamy. He became the first African leader to appoint females to high governmental positions. He encouraged female employment, recruited them into the military and granted pregnancy leave during education. Ce qui veut dire que nous devons donner à chaque femme un emploi. Nous devons donner à chaque femme le moyen de gagner honnêtement et dignement sa vie. Funnily enough, Sankara, who loved motorcycles, formed an all-women motorcycle bodyguard squad, and all the women traveled with him wherever he went across the country. Another important facet of Sankara's legacy was his humility and lack of willingness to create a cult of personality for himself. Despite all of his power, accolades and popularity, he declined to have his portrait hung in public spaces and government offices, claiming that, quote, there are seven million Thomas Sankaras, referring to the entire population of his country. Outside of Burkina Faso, Sankara opposed foreign aid strongly. He saw it as a tentacle of colonialism and urged African nations to show a united front to repudiate their foreign debt. Notre conférence adopte la nécessité de dire clairement que nous ne pouvons pas payer la dette. Non pas dans un esprit belliqueux, belliciste. Ceci pour éviter que nous n'allions individuellement nous faire assassiner. Si le Burkina Faso tout seul refuse de payer la dette, Je ne serai pas là à la prochaine conférence. He was highly regarded by the other anti-imperials of the time, such as Cuba's Fidel Castro, Libya's Mohamed el Qaddafi, Mozambique's Samora Machel, and Ghana's Jerry John Rawlings. But his tone and policies also won him enemies. Burkina Faso's elite were dissatisfied with Sankara's tight control of public funds and the damage that his policies had on their alliances with the West, and what they saw as an increasingly authoritarian style. On October 15, 1987, on his way to a special cabinet meeting, Sankara was ruthlessly assassinated. This is how the only survivor of the incident recalls the event. On entend comme des, des rafales de pluie par quand vous êtes dans une maison en tôle, des crépitements. Voilà où tout est parti. Et le camarade président se lève en ce moment-là. C'est de moi qu'ils ont besoin. Il sort les mains en l'air. Je précise bien. Les mains en l'air. The Putschists also killed Sankara's entourage. All fingers pointed to his close friend and the man who once led a coup to install him, Blaise Compaoré, who now declared himself president of the country but denied any involvement in Sankara's murder. And d'avoir perdu un ami, bien sûr. Et un regret aussi, euh, quand un moment de sa vie, il est pensé à nous liquider. Dommage. Sankara was just 37 years old. Burkina Faso quickly drifted away from Sankara's vision of a self-sufficient, anti-imperial state. Compaoré's regime incessantly tried to erase his memory. But as the captain himself once said, while revolutionaries as individuals can be killed, you cannot kill ideas. Compaoré was himself ousted by a popular revolution after he tried to extend his 27-year rule in 2014. The young protesters who called for his removal wore t-shirts that said, Sankara, he still provokes. Compaoré is now unable to return to his country. There is an international arrest warrant out for him for Sankara's assassination and lives in exile in the Ivory Coast. In the last few years, DNA tests and further investigations and trials into Sankara's death have taken place. 
with the most recent call for justice being directed to Francis Macron to release confidential files which investigators believe will reveal the former colonial nation's role in his assassination. La France ne comprend pas l'Afrique. Et le grand temps qu'elle qu la comprenne. La politique africaine de la France la trouvant très française. Today, 33 years after his passing, a statue of Sankara was erected in 2019 in his capital city at the very location he was killed. Burkina Bay youth still sing songs in his name and find inspiration, pride and dignity in his memory. Sankara, Sankara, mon président. Sankara, Sankara du Burkina. Il est venu en nous mentir pour bâtir une Afrique du Sankara, Sankara, Sankara.